Hey, your face was all up in the camera. You're, you're supposed learning, to. You're learning tricks from me. Well, then you want to, you want to go ahead? <laughs> yeah, let's see. Put your sensitive side to the camera. Um, so the side that is my sensitive side is the side that I got my nose pierced on. Why? Oh, I don't like the left side of my face because I have a birthmark that I've had my whole life. And I... people think, they're like, oh, you've got a rash. And so that's why I wear my hair this way. And that's why if I'm in pictures. I'm always on this side. Chilling. And that's why the show has to be Krisha and Frank. Right. It can't be Frank and Krisha because one, would... it sounds like we're developing a monster. Uh, and two, yeah. Um, right. And two, it's my, my bad side. So instead of the podcast porch, I thought it would be interesting to talk about fast food containers. Um, I thought it would be interesting to um, talk about this. Ooh, a hat. Because this is in your future, I feel like. It's not a hat. It's well, not. It's get it off my head. <laughs> no, I'm going to no. backwards. This is a total cowboy hat. Well, howdy, partner. Are you looking to go to the restroom today? Because we got you covered. What is it? It's a backhand. This is in my future? I mean, it's in all of our futures. I know a DJ who got fired because he basically pulled a Beethoven. Uh huh. He had, I don't know if I should tell you the story, but Beethoven um, was a genius, but he would have this chamber pot under the piano, and his assistants had to empty it. Right. And he wouldn't so get up to leave to go to the. So this. A DJ would do the same and thing. And then a big gulp cup. And uh, he made, we got fired when he okay. made an intern. Yeah, say uh, no more. Yeah, okay. So this is a bedpan. Right, and all of this is really cool, and this is actually why we're here. Oh yeah, we're in Von Or today. Hey, people uh, were fighting over that a couple months ago. Everything here is bathroom oriented. No, yeah, wait, I no, it's not. not. All right, well, well I mean, in. you've got consume and exhume. <laughs> yeah, so everything reminds me of the egg cartons that we used to in the olden days. There's an egg carton here somewhere, right? Yeah. This is. They're going to have to clean up. They're going to have to clean up. They're destroying It's the Christian and Frank show. You can find this. In fact, I, maybe I shouldn't give the email address because they're going to get mad and send they're, us. They're going to send us a very strongly worded email. You yeah. tore up our entire conference room. Yeah. Oh, well. So I'm going to accept, PayPal me. So. But in, when I was a kid, this is, was egg cartons were like this. Right. And then they made them in a plastic. And it was like. And foam. And people, arts and craftsy people are like, does anyone have the good egg carton? Yeah. My, my, um, my parents have chickens, and this is the kind of egg cartons that they use for their chickens. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. For their eggs. They don't put well, chicken in them. all this stuff is made out of fiber. Yes. And, and now, here in Von Nord, Tennessee, they, have, they make this stuff, or they sell the fiber, so you can mm -hmm. make this stuff at your own factory. And um, whether you're making you know, sorghum and sawgrass, as what is this Sorghum is. and sawgrass. It's really fun to say. Sorghum and sawgrass. I think I got a, had a job interview with them. With uh, sorghum and sawgrass? Yeah, they were a country In the morning. morning. <laughs> yeah, they, were, they, they wanted me to be their producer, and I said, yeah. no. What were they going to name you? Hayseed? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wonder to name it. Okay, we got to get on with it. So we came here uh, because we were invited uh, to see uh, Genera, and Sam Jackson is in charge of things. Come on, Sam, and has jump been into over the here. So he's been sitting over there watching, can't believe that he has allowed this into his company. Brilliant. So come on in, Sam. Okay. Welcome. Nice to have you. Thank here. you. Here. Appreciate it. Yep. Good to see you. Elbow time. Hi, yeah. So uh, some of this stuff is is what we're talking about. Like this looks like what you would feed a duck at the mm -hmm. zoo. But what to explain how we get from the plants outside to this. Sure. So uh, we work with local farmers here in East Tennessee. So all of the stuff that you're seeing here, we're grown on local farms, uh, typically within 50 to 100 miles of yeah. Monor. So kind of everything in the Tennessee Valley here. And so. We work with crops like sorghum, as you were mentioning, switchgrass, wheat straw, several other things that are typically grasses that are grown on the farm. What's the um, difference between sawgrass and switchgrass? So there are lots of different varieties of, of grasses. And oh, even, right. it, as an example, within switchgrass, there are about 31 different species. So oh, species I told her she's only 29. <laughs> Dang it. You didn't wins, do your homework she, right, right? No, she wins the bet. I do. She, so, got, she had the over. I do. <laughs> so so there, there, there are minor differences. There's not a whole lot of difference. Um, the, the key thing here is that we're making fiber out of grass. And that's a very different concept than traditional wood pulp or something like that. See, because I said to yes to this interview because I need more fiber, but I didn't expect. <laughs> I've been eating too much cheese lately. It's been a problem. <laughs> so, so believe it or not, they've used switchgrass and some of these other feedstocks in pet food and in cattle feed and that sort of thing for just very much what you're talking about for fiber. Oh yeah, because so you, you have to evacuate. You could get, you know, yeah. we're, we're talking about, you know, maybe a, a breakfast cereal with switchgrass in it there. That'd be, that'd now, be the ultimate thing. <laughs> all right, so when I looked up sorghum and mm -hmm. switchgrass, mostly sorghum on, mm -hmm. on Wikipedia, it says that in some parts of the world they make a porridge yep. out of it, a pap out of it, and it yep. struck me the irony that you could actually eat, um, you could go to the hotel, Krisha mm -hmm. was talking about, yep. 
Yeah, you get your continental breakfast, you get your little cereal and put it in there, and, yeah, yeah, and then you could just eat your bowl. Absolutely. You could eat the sorghum out of a sorghum bowl. So you could eat the bowl. The bowl wouldn't hurt you. I'm not going to say that it would taste good at all. Do you dare me to take a do bite out of one? You know, uh, we didn't make those particular bowls, so I can't swear to those. But uh, <laughs> no, you, theoretically, though, yes, it's all plant based, right? And so it's all food safe. So you could either consume it or you could put it in a compost pile in your backyard and within uh, a few months, a few weeks, it's going to break back down into the soil. And I have just started dissipate. a garden just outside my kitchen window mm -hmm. and my wife is finding it unusual that I raise this window and drop the coffee grounds and the eggshells mm -hmm. out the window. Yep. That's awesome. That's, I could do it with this. Absolutely. Th that plate could go in that same pile and it will break down. And that's the key thing that we're doing here is we're making products that will replace the plastic, the polystyrene, the styrofoam type containers because and, they don't break down ever. And that was my question about like the environmental impact because not only are you making something that actually will break down that you can use again, but how does that affect, you said that a lot of this is coming, most of this is mm -hmm. coming from local farms. Correct. How is that an environmental impact for us to not use tree pulp and to, to have it locally? So, so that's an excellent, excellent question. And Thank you. So, <laughs> gold star. <laughs> so tree pulp in itself is sustainable. I, you know, you can't argue about that. But when we look at, particularly on the food service side, this is what we call molded fiber products. So this is a nine inch takeout container. So if you go to a local restaurant and you get takeout food, this is kind of yeah, what you're gonna get. We're used to getting that in styrofoam. Correct, exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's been a bigger push here over the last five or six years to get a lot more of these fiber products in use because they're more sustainable. What we have found though is about 90 to 95% of these types of things that are used in the U.S. today are imported from China or India. Mm -hmm. So they're pulped in a, a Southeast Asian country, they're shipped to India or China, that pulp is, they're molded, they're put in a container and they're shipped to the U.S. So there's vulnerabilities in the supply chain. There's absolute <laughs> vulnerabilities and from an environmental standpoint, there's a lot of fuel that goes into moving that product around right. multiple continents. And so when we look at growing it here locally, you know, one, we've eliminated all those disruptions in the supply chain. We've reduced all of that petroleum use. And so you get an overall more sustainable product. So not only is it good from that perspective, but also it creates a new market for farmers. Yeah. You know, you know so it's- Because was sawgrass a, um, a thing before or was it just a weed? Very, very few folks used the grass as a forage, and even on the sorghum side, few people grew it here. And if they did, they were feeding it to cows. Okay, but, um, but it was which a very is why small, you call it uh, bi you know, biomass. Yeah, biomass yeah, feed mm -hmm. sorghum. Yeah, whatever, and yeah. so what what we found is that um, you know farmers will grow something if there's a market for it. If there's not a market, there's not going to be very that's, uh, that's very pretty much, much yeah. of <laughs> Exactly, you you want to get paid, and so. You know, we've got farmers in this region that are doing beef cattle and corn and soybeans and lots of other crops, and they can continue to do this. These crops fit on typically a part of the farm that they don't use very much or they're not making money on. So but we're not replacing yeah. anything. We're just adding to their well, overall. What industry. concerns me, though, is if you get this bedpan too wet. <laughs> yeah, no. It, so I mean, let's, say, let's suppose 19 ounces. But, but, it's, but there's, it's, it, it, what are you going to do, multiple use? And that's what you're exactly right. These are really designed for single use applications. Oh. You could, and I will tell you this, right. you could pour water in that and leave it on the counter and in 36 to 48 hours, it might start soaking through. It's gonna hold. Okay, but the, so the, we just the need balance, the to come get it before that. Exactly, All right. yeah, exactly. So the balance is you want it to break down and it takes moisture to break down for composting, but you don't want it to break down too, too fast. Soon. So right, that's right. kind of the balance that we strike there. Now, in the age of COVID-19, everything we want is disposable in plastic. And I saw this on your website, mm -hmm. uh, but you're saying, wait a minute, slow down. <laughs> you know, uh, having uh, plastic everything, like especially in food service, we exactly. all now, uh, instead of going in, we're using more and more of these clamshell boxes. That's what we're calling them, Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I think they call them in the- They're the clamshells. Yep, clam absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like so, you know, and, and what you get today predominantly, as you said, is, is styrofoam. That's been what that industry has used because it's been cheap and easy. And we've been using more and more of it. Absolutely. With, and the, I thinking that, you know, while we're safe, it's wrapped in plastic. Yeah, more than a third, uh, well, actually, throughout COVID, more than 50% of restaurant business was takeout. Mm -hmm. They're projecting now that a minimum of a third of a restaurant's business will continue to be takeout for the indefinite future. Yeah, yeah. Just because of the change in consumers and what they want to do. And so, yeah. You know, what we found is that if you look at a map of the U.S. and you look at the coastal areas on the East Coast and the West Coast and, and the Gulf, a lot of communities and states have started banning single-use plastics. 
and oh, it gets into the water. Gets into the water, washes up on the beach, and, and it's yeah. a big issue. And so I mean, when I was a that's kid, really what's driving a lot of this. Kids were young in California. It was all about the uh, six pack soda yeah. rings mm -hmm. and worrying about the dolphins and the turtles. Yep. So we'd have to cut them exactly. before they go in the garbage. Yep. And and you know. Um, we're even seeing whole countries. So Canada has announced that they're going to ban single-use plastics by the end of 2022. And so you start you seeing that movement. Email. So what you're saying? Don't worry. Don't <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, and, and that's totally that's positive. the great thing is that you know the market is there. And so what's unique is we're trying to do this in Tennessee. You know, we're making these materials. You know, as a matter of fact, um, these plates here were the first ever made in Vonor as of last week. Oh yeah. So we oh, made those oh. here in Von Orr. Let's awesome. um, see what kind of lift they get. Yeah, and, hey, they're great. Oh hey. Hey, and you know so we've much. actually um, had staff meetings where we've played games with our plates like frisbee. Uh, it works should. pretty well. I yeah. mean, it got we, it was caught <laughs> off camera because like. <laughs> my throw is so bad. I was <laughs> aiming. <laughs> I was supposed to go that away. And so with this happening, and is this something new? Like making these plates here in Von Orr, is that more people with jobs, more absolutely that you're bringing to the area yep. in East Tennessee? So our plan is coming online right now. Uh, we're going to get through the full startup here over the next month. We've been in construction for the last year or so. It started out just growing, yeah, uh, or not growing, but processing the, the stuff Correct. from the That's farmers what we, and turning it into fiber that we would sell to a manufacturer, but right. now you're on to that side of it. Absolutely. Also. So, right. yeah, we were traditionally a supplier. We grew the crops, worked with the folks that were using the fiber. Now we've moved into manufacturing. Because this is 10 years now, more. right? Yes. 2010, you guys I've been with Genera since uh, January of 2009. That is on so. YouTube, by the way, if you want to look it up. Yeah, <laughs> and that, that was before all the gray hair. You know. <laughs> it's been a little stressful at times. Um, but yeah. I think so, I should put in a picture right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my 12-year-old found that online not long ago and, and threw that up at me as well. So I'm like, this is because of you. As 12-year-olds will do. Exactly, Thank exactly. You. So the, the plant's coming online. Um, we, we have, we're approaching about 60 employees here on site now, and we'll continue to ramp production with some additional manufacturing machines over the next year or so, and eventually we'll be up to about 120 full-time employees here in Von Orr. That's um, awesome. All new yeah, jobs. there's a sign out front that you're hiring. Yeah, if you know anybody or if you want to apply, we're still looking for. Quite I mean, a few we're good both folks. we're both partially unemployed. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, do you need people to make jokes about bedpans? Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I can do that every day. It, so, it, it'll help sales. So you know, I'm all for it. Get on in here, Mr. Frisbee Catcher, because um, when I have you seen all this stuff going around Facebook and and jump in. Um, that, uh, you know, it's the silly little polls that were like, what, what were you going to be? Like, if you were doing the job that you wanted to be when you were in high school or when you were in whatever, I wanted to be an ecological environmental architect. Well, that is what are. I wanted wow, to that's do. A mouthful. This is yeah. it. That's a lot. I wanted to build and help build sustainability in, within like the wetlands in West Knoxville, uh -huh. where you can build walking trails and you can in, like keep it environmentally safe and keep the wetlands. And because there's totals. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And so I wanted to be like, a game show host, so uh, please <laughs> describe for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, do, you get to do something. The that, difference right? between a turtle and a tortoise. Go. <laughs> um, one slower than the other. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you do here? So, I am the feedstock manager. So, right. I am the I direct line. Again? I'm Brad Valentine. Brad right Valentine. Because yeah. no, I want to put it on the words. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get them in order here. Yeah. So, I'm the front line between the, the facility here and the growers in the field. So, right. I, I work with them all individually uh, on contracting yeah. and, you know, getting out and making sure that, you know, they're getting their crops up and harvested and, and everything throughout the growing season, the production system on the yeah. ag side of things. So I imagine that you guys have um, standards for the, the growers. So when you're out and you know, there's somebody saying, hey, I would like to grow this stuff and supply it here. Like, when, so are you going out and you're making sure, are you kind of like quality control as well? I, I guess you could say yeah. quality control on the farm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, How's yeah. your garden at home? Uh, do not have one. <laughs> so we, when you do this for a living, you don't have time to do it. <laughs> right. So I was going to say what Brad also means by feedstock manager that, that he doesn't work the eight to five hours that mm -hmm. a lot of folks work. He works the farm hours, so it's not uncommon for Brad to be here at seven thirty in the morning so it's and leave the farm at nine o'clock at night. You know, oh, kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, so first thing this morning is lunchtime for you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're all coming in eating their biscuits and gravy Who and I'm having a ham sandwich. go to work at 5 in the morning? Dude, I'm telling you, it's I like just... those morning show hours when you're at work at 4.15 and everybody's coming in at 9 and you're getting your lunch. You're like, I got yeah. skeddy. <laughs> <laughs> We've been there. <laughs> for sure. And how long have you been with 
So I've been with Janir a little over a year now. Yeah. I started in August of last year. That's awesome. What were you like? How did you how did you end up in feed stock management? So I've always been in the agriculture realm of things. Mm -hmm. um, kind of started in high school. Did a little bit of uh, a lot of work in FFA, Future mm -hmm. Farmers of America. Proud FFA kid. There you go. Mm -hmm. Go go team. Um, <laughs> then when I went into college, I got into agriculture from there. Uh, studied four years for for agriculture business. Mm -hmm. Ended up he in... He didn't go to the orange school, though. He oh, went to that you, school uh, up there on the plateau. Went to, I went to well, Tech. Go Eagles. That's, that's <laughs> <all> right. <laughs> but you do have a lot of UT. Yeah. Oh, there are there. a lot of UT yeah. folks. Right? But I, I bleed orange. Okay. Because yeah. you put on the camouflage on Fridays, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bright orange. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, did that. I worked in genetics uh, for about eight years for a large seed company. And wow. was looking to get back to East Tennessee. Kind of learned about this project, and here I am. That's so awesome. Because you really here, you have I don't know the University of Tennessee with the Ag Campus. I mean, it was what uh, was called a land land, land grant land grant grant university. university. Yeah. But you also have uh, Oak Ridge National Lab. Correct. Yeah. Um, and you're a PhD, so I should really call you Dr. Sam. I'm a recovering PhD. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, they do experiments. I mean, my son did his internship at one summer at mm -hmm. um, at ORNL, and it was all about you know. For him, bio, he's a chemical engineer, but he was said, well, I had to kind of stretch a little bit because it was about seeds and, uh, you know, the more the, the bio met, yep. biochemical engineering side of things. Mm -hmm. Is there an ORNL connection with Genera as well? Yeah, absolutely. So I tell you, being located where we're at and being able to work with uh, scientists at UT and at ORNL has just, I can't tell you how many times it's helped us in, okay. in, in a wide yeah. variety of areas. So we've done, you know, agronomic research, you know, sustainability work with both uh, the lab and UT, uh, but even on things like the 3D printing capability and knowledge base at the lab, mm -hmm. um, we're looking at some of those options for our manufacturing facility. It can help reduce parts costs and, and things like that. And so um, we have some really good relationships at, at both. Um, like you said, I'm a recovering PhD. I was at UT before I came to Genera. Um, but, you know, it's, it's having those resources so close uh, by that you can pick up a phone and we've built relationships over the years it, it makes a huge difference from a it is amazing and we take it for granted but when i talk to family members in other parts of the country they, they can't grasp how much is at our fingertips in east tennessee yep. they can't mm -hmm. exactly. wrap their hands around it because to them it's all moonshine and and gatlinburg <laughs> yeah and seeing Christian do the vaudeville uh, yeah. <laughs> people have no idea how many if, if you really go back and look at it, how much innovation has come out of this local area, whether it's UT or ORNL or other manufacturing, it, there's just so much that has gone on here over the years that, that we, I don't think that the lab and UT and other places get enough credit for because there's been a lot of cool stuff. Just oh, like yeah. we saw with COVID, the N95 masks that came out of UT, nobody it's, knew that was from UT <laughs> until this. Yeah, exactly. But it's yeah. all from the university, yeah. you know, and, and that's really cool. And so those relationships, again, help us so much. We've participated in a lot of research projects, uh, done a lot of really cool things with, with the university and the lab, and we'll hopefully continue to do that. Of course, absolutely. There's no question. Yeah. Well, I have one final question. Um, no, I said there was no question. I, I, <laughs> I do. He's done. I mean, come um, on. Yeah, on I'm the finished. Farm side, I'm it. sure that you're you're uh, you're familiar with cows. Sure. Uh, so on the way here, mm -hmm. uh, we're passing a little lake, uh, and there's a cow in the middle of the lake, mm -hmm. a little bitty island, just chomping away with water on all sides. Water again. on all mm -hmm. sides. And it did not seem bothered by this whatsoever. We, were, we imagined um, the cow thing, I guess I live here. I guess I live here now, <laughs> like just in my mail. Um, like cows can swim, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or wade, can they wade? <laughs> He's like. They, they, they'll typically, they won't usually swim, but they'll, I've seen them go in up to their neck, especially on a hot day and you're a black cow mm -hmm. and, and it's really uh -huh. hot outside, you know, they'll get in, in ponds, but. I've seen them swim. They don't like it, but they can do it. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah, we just wanted to make sure the cows. Yeah, kind of like your cat. Your cat doesn't He's want to not swim. Stuck there. But if you throw your cat in the pool, it's going to swim out. It's going to swim out. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, if we have to go back and yeah. and, and drag it. Like that. Frank legitimately slowed the car down. He was like, <gasps> "He's stuck." <laughs> like, I, I know exactly where you're talking about, and it's not uncommon to see cows out there <laughs> on that little. <laughs> yep, on that little oh, peninsula. It's barely bit cow. bigger than a cow. The fun part was there was one day last year that apparently somebody on a Friday night had a good time, and there was a truck on that little island the oh. next morning that was oh. half in the water half out so, well yeah that's a little more stuck than a cow yeah exactly <laughs> who knew the cows could drive <laughs> that's
learned something. <laughs> you learned something I every day. I thought the bears were going to be the ones to get in the cars <laughs> and, and, and turn on the automatic, you know, indignation. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. <laughs> but thank you all so much for well, having us you. out. Yeah. And we're going right. to go outside and, like, look at cool stuff. Yeah, Brad Valentine and Sam Jackson. So come on, show us yeah. show us where this stuff came from. And... We're going on a field trip. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I'm not going to take a bite out of it, even though. You really want It wouldn't hurt you, but it wouldn't taste very good. All right. It'd be, it'd be a come on with us. Like my actual hardware. Yeah, like my actual breakfast. Hi. Am I supposed to remember? I don't know. I'm supposed to remember, which is her good side now, apparently. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You've only known me for 15 years. Um, so I was just saying, this is Arundo. It's huge. It's so big. It's and two of you. I was it's, just, it's two Krishas tall. I was just saying to Sam, Sam, come on. He, I said, I want it in my yard. He's like, no, you don't. So, There's too much sun on you. Come over so here. we often joke. So we did, we worked with Arundo come years in, ago Sam. Oh, for one of our there customers. And, um, the challenge with Arundo is it grows really fast, but yeah. it's really aggressive. And so we joke that there's a reason it's surrounded by concrete in here. So we started here with 10 plants, and it, it's very aggressive. It spreads a lot. Well, it's so, going to spread more. It sounds well, no, like it's, it's going to stay in between the concrete. Um, okay. They've grown it in other places, like in Europe, really well, but it is a big growth plant, and it's not something that we'll use here in Tennessee. But I've chosen to hang out with the sorghum. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It sounds like me, Frank. Arundo sounds like me. Oh, aggressive. Wait can't be contained and have no use for. <laughs> Here, I've got you some flowers. Thank you. It's sorghum. What are you picking sorghum I for? didn't mean to. So, well, and, and what most people Sam, don't realize about the sorghum, <laughs> no, no, has, it's fine. He's destroyed everything. So, most people when yeah, they that think of sorghum. Yeah, that bedpan, I will take that home. I'm sorry. <laughs> you do not have to dispose of that. I will, <laughs> you can put that back in the car. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Please tell us about sorghum. So what I was gonna say is most people think of sorghum, they think of grain sorghum, and they get yeah, tall, is that this what, tall, and this, it has a big head on it of wait, grain, and that's what they make a lot of products. This out is of. broken. This, yeah, I just like to point out so this is, this is not good sorghum. The sorghum we use is totally different. It it gets it, about twelve to fifteen feet tall in the field. I mean, some of those back there are about fifteen yeah. feet tall. Okay. Um, it's just it looks like a giant corn plant. That's really what most people would associate it with. But well, we like it. Here, let, me, because, let me get you a close up. There you go. It's good. Yeah, and what we like it's it for good. is because mm -hmm. it, like it? it gets super big it's very good. and has a lot of fiber. I mean, that's the ultimate thing we're looking for is more fiber. And yes, it would help your fiber balance in your diet if you could uh, get it in. Which, As we previously <laughs> stated, Frank had too much cheese, so. Which part? He's going to put this in the trunk. Well, they know that from the bedpan, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> they... <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> it's a good Lord. test. It was a good test yeah. of the product, you know? Yeah, very effective. Okay, uh, here, here. Okay. I don't want to, I can't, I don't know what to do with it. And so, <laughs> as we were walking over, you were talking that right now you're, you're building out and you have mm -hmm. how many construction? So we're, we're finishing up construction right now. We've actually started up some of our machinery, but at one point we had about 350 construction workers a day on site. Today we're probably down to about the 200 range just wow. because we're starting to ramp down and start up and that's, that's a change over there. But you know, with all the COVID and all the stuff there. <laughs> We're only, you know, maybe a couple of weeks behind schedule, if that. Wow. I mean, it's been really, really good. We've been very thankful and, and had a good team working over there. That's so, awesome. So this is just for decoration? Yeah, that's correct. We dealt with it, that for, a, in a past life, we dealt with it. This yeah. stuff that I keep breaking is yep. the sorghum, but correct. the actual, is it sawgrass or switchgrass? Switchgrass. switchgrass. Is this oh, one this right here? This is, okay. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> we all hug switchgrass from time to time. Is that for real? Um, you were saying it's a perennial. So it grows back year after year, and that's why farmers really like it, is because they only have to plant it one time. It just keeps coming back year after year. Now the sorghum is an annual, so you have to replant it every year. But it fits That's on some farms. That's for correct. Farming, right? That for matches farming. much more closely with traditional farm operations. Row cropping. Row cropping, exactly. If, if somebody's been doing corn or soybeans, they're used to that type of operation. But if you're a hay farmer or a beef cattle farmer, you're used to more perennial grasses, and that's where it fits. That's great. Um, so you're, you're tapping into to two different types yep, of farming exactly. at the same time. Trying that's to appeal awesome. to as many growers as you can. And what most people don't realize, so switchgrass is a native plant. So it's east of the Rocky Mountains in North America. So when Lewis and Clark were writing about seeing the big herds of buffalo in their expedition in the 1800s, um, the grass that the buffalo were eating, some of that was switchgrass. It's a native prairie grass. Oh, and so right. it has that historical value to it as well. So it's kind of cool to get to work with something that, that's historical like that. That's right. so cool. All right. Thank well, you guys so much. Appreciate this. I'm, this is my happy day. I'm so happy. The Field sun's trip. shining. It could have been. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah. All right. It's Von Ors, the center of the universe, right? <laughs> Apparently, according to you guys. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you very kindly. No problem. Uh, Brad you. Valentine, Sam Jackson, uh, for being on the Christian and Frank show. Science edition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, seriously, I could do this. I, 
like we have to change our podcast. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, We're you know, to... eventually when we have the Christian and Frank Show Radio Network mm -hmm. podcast network, we can have a science channel and a and science nerd and a, and a travel channel. Right now, we're just kind of mixing it all in together. Yeah, awesome. All right. Well, um, do like us and follow us. That means you, Sam, mm -hmm. on uh, all of the uh, different socials. Look for Krisha and Frank. Mm -hmm. And please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. We apparently have to get to 1,000. If I, you have more this. friends than we do, have them subscribe to YouTube because all of our friends have already done it. We have a ways to go. We're sitting about like 300, but we need to get to 1,000 YouTube subscribers. Yeah. So uh, please do help us out in that regard uh, because it means we can monetize, yeah. frankly. That's all it is. Uh, and also, uh, we're on all your different podcasting apps. If you want to listen to the audio portion of this and not actually see what I did to that bedpan. <laughs> what? We got to go home. <laughs> we got to go home. All right, wrap it up. All right. I'm Krisha. And I'm Frank. Bye. Bye. I thought that was your bad side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh,